Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're keeping well and welcome finally to Football Manager 2019 Mobile. This is my first look and review of the game. So from the off guys, obviously it's been rebranded. It's now Football Manager 2019 Mobile. So I do apologise if I do say Football Manager Mobile 2019 because that's basically what I'm used to saying. But I will try my hardest not to say that so the branding obviously it's fitting in line now perfectly with the new football manager 2019 completely branding that purpley pinky color that some people weren't too fond of at first i must say that i wasn't overly keen enough seeing the screenshots but now i'm actually playing the beta of the full foot game to be fair i think it works really really nice and i like the fact that they've kind of kept it with them diagonal lines and everything in this game as well so from the off it looks uh, very nice indeed now i am going to warn you guys because i got a bit of hate actually last time i did my football manager 2018 mobile uh, review that um, people were moaning that it was too long and stuff yes this is long because it's me reviewing the game in depth so uh you know i do apologize that it's going to be a lengthy one but at the same time i'm doing a full kind of in-depth dive to the game so if this isn't your kind of thing that you want to see you just want to see a bit of gameplay and all that kind of thing this probably isn't the video for you but if you want to find out what the new features are for the game then this is the place for you so let's delve into a new game now as we can see we've got that seven screen flow that was introduced last year as well we've still got the micro we've still got the challenges i'm presuming nothing new here no, it's seven challenges, so it's not going to be anything new. Uh, and we've got the My Career, which obviously is what everyone, most people play, to be perfectly honest. To see that there's still the 30-year kind of limit on there is slightly disappointing, but I completely get it because obviously the app can't be huge. You can't just, you know, the, the app's already pretty big. They want to try and make this game as, um, you know, uh, available for as many devices that there are out there. And obviously Android has quite a... A vast range of devices so it's quite hard to to entail what kind of device you know what the limits are on that device that's why there's the two different versions of match engine uh, you know you can play on the original match engine or the enhanced match engine and it just tries to give as many people the option to play this game as possible so I completely get it from that point of view so let's now go through and just see if there is anything new on here uh, this is me playing it on uh, an iPad by the way guys not on Android as usual um, just for the purpose of getting the video out this is the, the device that I've bought with me. I am away at the moment, actually recording this video, but the iPad is the, the device that I bought with me. Um, so for, just for the purpose of this video as well, I am going to be leaving attribute masking off. I don't want to get into a whole argument about the, any, like, any way people should play the game. I personally like playing with attribute masking on, but for the purpose of this video, I am going to leave it off just so we can maybe look at a few people's actual attributes overall as well. We've obviously got the unlockables on that right hand side, which Obviously, you can either purchase if you want to cheat or, or uh, you know, you just kind of want to get the whole package. Or you can also just unlock them as you go through the game. Reputation-wise, we're going to be starting on, we'll just leave it as normal to be perfectly honest. Uh, let's have a look at the leagues. Now, we've got the two brand new leagues that I did this year. We've got China and Russia. And if you haven't seen my announcement trailer for my Football Manager 2019 mobile Let's Play kind of series that I'm doing, um, it will be in the Chinese league as well so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that and if you are then don't forget to show your support by dropping a like on this video and if you're pretty super hyped for playing football manager yourself to be fair guys just that you know the links are in the description down below they're not in any way affiliated to me i do not gain anything from you downloading from them links down below it just basically takes you to the itunes store or the google play store of your choice whichever device you play on and um, we are going to load up the english league just because I am going to be taking over the mighty League United, but we will open up Russia, China, and Germany. Uh, for me, the ad addition of Russia, I don't really get it. I'm presuming, obviously, the game must sell quite well over there. I'm not too sure. I don't personally get it myself. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I kind of get it if it's kind of financially viable for them. China, I very much like the addition of China because... As you can see on the screen, it's very European heavy. Now the addition of the, the fake USA MLS that they introduced last year was, was great. Although it's quite disheartening that it's not real. It's a the very it's like a toned down nothing. It's it's basically it's not really the MLS, it's just a one league system with no promotion relegation, but none of the other good stuff that the MLS brings, like drafts and all that kind of stuff. Um the addition of China now and obviously South Korea. Um, we've got Australia and USA. It gives people options outside of that European comfort zone. I would have loved to have seen, and I hope next year we get something like Mexico or Argentina, 
I know Brazil's a little bit of a touchy subject in the moment, but, you know, maybe Colombia, something like that. One of the South American leagues, that'd be absolutely perfect for my liking. Uh, but we're going to be going on with this one today. We're going to be starting off, obviously, on the England uh, start date as well. And, uh, yeah, taking over the mighty Leeds United. Now, guys, in the comment section down below, as this is kind of loading up, let me know what your first save on Football Manager 2019 Mobile is going to be. Uh, also, the reason why I chose Germany is just because it's going to look so pretty now, isn't it? From day one, without actually uploading any kind of packages, any face packs, any team packs, anything like that, you've got your kind of you got your badges, you've got your players' faces, all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to be going over to England, into the Championship, and over at Leeds United. And now, guys, it's going to take some time to load this one, so I'll join you guys very, very shortly. Right, so first off, guys, obviously a brand new screen for you guys here. Um, our two fair, I was pretty fond of the last one. I did quite like that one. I'm presuming the background will change depending on the team you manage. The fact that we've chose Leeds United and the fact that they've got the badge and the championship badge there makes it look nicer. Obviously, if you've got kind of, you know, clubs where they don't have the officially licensed badges, it might look a little bit rubbish to start with. But as I said, there is all that unofficial good stuff out there on, on different for, uh, formats and um, forums and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, we quite like this. The fact that there's a big kind of void on the screen there where a player's face would look really, really nice. So the fact that we could just have and make a manager's face or maybe just choose out of a generic 30 options would have been a nice thing there i'm presuming that's maybe something there for, th for things to come in 2020 because that's supposed to be the next big jump for the game this one is supposed to be another transitional period so they did quite a lot of work to be fair in 2018 this one's again just taking the things that they didn't have time to do in 2018 and put them into 2019 so i think that's going to be the cycle now for the for the mobile game there's going to be two two years uh, of one year where there's quite a big step change then there's going to be the minimal changes that they couldn't make and then the next year will be another good big step change so i'm hoping 2020 will be good but let's have a quick look what we've got in store from the guys over at si in 2019 so we've just seen a bog standard screen here again i don't really see any reason to change this unless they did a whole ui overhaul again this one works really well for me i like the fact you've got links in here so i can go and see stow i'm going to see Derby, it works really well. I like it. It's crisp, clean, and it works really well. So there's no need to do that. And um, the board of directors are actually expecting me to attain a safe mid-league table position. Um, that's quite weird. I don't really get that because I'm, uh, surely they'd be expecting me to gain promotion. Maybe it's because of my rating as a manager. Maybe because I'm only a rookie manager. They're probably not expecting Matthew. But I'm actually going to tell them that I want that seven million pounds. Um, I can achieve them promotion. Um, so let's have a quick look. So staff-wise, let's have a look. We are full at the moment. We've got actually three bronzes there. I've just seen a new button down here, offer roles to senior players. So let's just pop that in there, just to see if anything comes to fruition from the, uh, them. Uh, let's just have a quick look at Tom Butterfield here. Obviously, you've got the option now of training your staff or sacking the physio and obviously bringing in somebody of a silver colour. But let's have a quickly have a look. Uh, let's take his exam for him. I'm actually pleased to inform you that he actually has passed it. We've now got a silver rated physio and uh, that, that obviously isn't going to happen every single time that was just quite lucky for me um nonetheless we've now got a gold silver and bronze rated physio in the team obviously we will be kind of upgrading this as we go guys although to be fair this save is just for the purpose of the kind of review of the game but uh, who knows i might continue offline up how it goes and so on let's have a good look we've got dago uh, reyes there and it has actually welcomed me to the club and compiled his review now this was an addition from last year i really really like this one i lo love this review i look at it probably about twice a month when i'm actually playing the game just have a quick look about see if there's anything in a negative kind of section that i can actually short term fix in the club or if it's something more a little bit long term uh, suggest an 11 so this is obviously going purely not on form just on ratings and nothing based on form so it's not ideal obviously it's kind of good to give you an idea overall especially if you don't know the club kind of what your best 11 is but obviously you still got to then look into the players look kind of what roles you want them to play what formation what tactics you want them to play and build a team around that squad depth is a good overall view of kind of players where you may need to bring in players at the moment we're obviously looking for some reason it's telling me see this is what i don't understand it's telling me we're weak in goalkeepers. We're not, we've got two great goalkeepers. The reason for that is because we've got no depth past that. So if one was to pick up an injury, one was to get suspended, we've got no one past that. So to have a third option at goalkeeper is always key. Even if he's just in the reserves or just sitting there not playing much game, maybe only getting you know, on the bench for cup games. But you know it's always good to have a third choice goalkeeper. It's the same we've got weaknesses at left and right back, which for me, to be fair, we've got depth in different positions. Um, and the fact that people can kind of fill in because we've got versatile players there. 
But for me, it's showing that we've got depth in the position of centre back, which we don't. We only have two registered centre backs, which is Janssen and Cooper in the team. Other than that, we, you know, we have got quite a few players that can fill in there, but they're not actually, you know, out and out central defenders. They're just people filling in, which is why it's making me think. I don't know why. Possibly because there's only four, but to be fair, I'm quite happy with the depth we've got at left and right back. It is a centre back where I will be looking to bring in players. Obviously, then we've got the club stats as per usual there as well. Um, and this is now the again an addition from last year. They've actually drawn up a short list here, so let's have a quick look what we've got here. Um, so we've got uh, basically a load of players that they've kind of suggested to me. Let's have a quick look here what they're kind of saying in terms of uh, what's the best overall player at the start. So it's Gabriel Mercado. Uh, transfer. Well, this is new. Uh, so this is actually telling me what the minimum uh, money I'd have to spend to get the player. And their kind of wage demand as well, which is actually really good. A nice addition there. So that's kind of showing me that, you know, I could possibly bring in somebody like uh, Rodrigo Chiao, or Chiao from Port... Uh, what well, what team is that? I'm um, rubbish with the Brazilian teams. I'm not too sure what the team that is. Or I do apologise. Um, but yeah, because obviously his wage demand isn't too big. His actual minimum... I don't know if that's a release clause or what, but I could actually bring him in. So let's have a quick... While we're actually in here, let's have a quick look. Let's make an offer now. Okay, what is this? This is uh, the what? So what we're going to do here? So let's have a let's just actually inquire here and see what goes on here. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is now a live transfer offer. Okay, this is cool. This is really cool. So as you can see now, I've just put an inquiry and they've said that they'll go for one point seven million uh, for the defender. So and I tell you, I'm happy to suggest that. So let's pop that in now. And that has, oh, hang on, no, what's going on here? There are several clubs still so, being, sorry. My highest I've received for the summer one. Okay, so we've now actually had a club put in a bid for 1.7 million as well to match on. So we've now gone up to 1.8. Yours is one of several clubs competing to purchase. Okay, so we're now actually into the depths of, see, they're actually going with 3.7 million pounds now. Shanghai and Fersberg have actually put in 3.7 million pounds. Now, I can go that high at the moment, so. It's obviously not now, now not allowing me to suggest the terms until we get up to that 3.7 million pounds. If that go much higher, though, it's going to be okay. 5.75. We've still got the two clubs in it at the moment. Only the one has gone up to that three, 5.75. Oh, let's uh, I mean, let's go there as well. 5.7. We'll go for six million. No, what is going on now? I am being out, but it's Shanghai going big here. See, if I don't think this player is actually worth much more than that. So I'm actually going to end the negotiations there. But I really like this. This is a really good addition. Live kind of, you know, updates as we're going. As it's a live negotiation. That was a really good feature uh, addition for this year. And I, 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 oh, God, look at that. 8.25 million is actually gone for in the end. Uh, but I really like the addition of that. And I hope you guys uh, will enjoy kind of doing some live negotiations. And let me know in the comment section down below what your best negotiation tactic is is so far uh we can see the training says new now training isn't new i'm presuming there's going to revamp for that but before we get into that let's just have a quick delve into this squad and the first thing i can see there is something that i'm not overly you know i've never called for it never asked for it but i know a lot of people in the community are after it so squad numbers now so we're finally gonna have now down squad numbers in the team and to be fair now looking at it it does look pretty nice and i can understand why people want it but it doesn't really add anything. I know it adds a kind of a little, a little kind of step of realism, I suppose, and I get that. But for me, it's not really massive. I and mean, I'm going to really start annoying people now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, and I'm going to take you off as well. I'm going to remove the shirt from you. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, Bamford's shirt off him as well, and I'm going to put uh, Peacock Farrell in at the number nine shirt. <laughs> and I'm going to. This is going to annoy so many people. Patrick Bamford. Where are you? Where's he gone now? Just had him in the other year. Patrick Bamford. Yeah, I've got the number one shirt. I'm going to see what the end of it. Squad numbers. So that's going to be fun for people to watch the uh, the game as well. Uh, let's just progress. Oh, no. What am I doing? Why am I progressing forward? I'm, hang on. What's going on here? Okay. Okay. So now Manchester United have actually come in with a bid for Tom Pierce. Now, Tom Pierce is a player I would naturally not really want to get rid of. He's a player I would actually like. There's actually three teams. Newcastle United, Arsenal and Manchester United coming in for him. They've started quite big. Obviously, his valuation is only £1.4 million. They've both come in at £2.6 million. Um, and to be fair, Tom Pierce would be a player I'd naturally want to keep and build around for the future because we, although we've got Barry Douglas at the moment, 
Um, he is the player for the future for me at that left back position, and potentially I might even actually train him to become a, possibly a more attacking minded player. So we're going to go for. I'm just going to do a big here to be fair. I'm going to say if any of them offer me up to eight million pounds, you can have Tom Pearson. Let's see what they say. So Manchester United and Arsenal have drawn, withdrawn. Newcastle have actually um, gone for seven million pounds. Uh, oh no. They are actually willing to go up to the million pound mark. Uh, I'm, I'm still gonna have to reject. No, sorry, I want to keep Tom Pierce. Uh, I don't know that could be a bad move going forward, but I really like, really like that addition there from guys. Uh, let's actually have a quick look. I was supposed to be having a look at the the views here, seeing if they changed anything. Oh, kind of added attributes now, so we can actually just look at them. Okay, that's nice. That's nice if you kind of want to look at that. Um, yeah, I'm still disappointed. The reason why I'm not really saying which here is because. I'm just disappointed again. It's it's purely selfish and the way that I play the game. But I don't understand why can't I just put a filter on here now, which just showcases me for my team selection. I want to just know who can play left back, who can play defensive left, and then just highlight them players because, and especially for this team, obviously I know what these players can do and I know where they can kind of slot in and so on and so forth. But if you, when you're on a new team, sometimes it's a little bit annoying and it's again. And I don't know how many people even use it on Football Manager, but I use it on Full Fat Football Manager as well. I like to kind of filter things down so I can kind of see the group of players and then compare them players, have a look, you know, based on their form, based on, you know, their, their attributes and kind of what system I'm wanting to play that day. That's how I kind of work my starting 11 out. For this purpose, it's a little bit more drawn out and slightly annoying to be fair. So that's the reason why I want. Tactics wise, let's have a quick look here. Actually, let's just quickly just select a team. There we go. Let's just have a quick look at the roles. So keeper, we've got um, super keeper and normal goalkeeper. Uh, wing backs are the same. I don't know what I'm on as well. Let's just slot a defensive midfielder in there as well, as well as that, just to see if anything changed there as well. Um, we've got defensive. Okay, so we've got the no nonsense centre back, which is actually in the full fat game. We have got sweeper as well now, as uh, which so that probably means that yeah. So there is actually no option now to put a player in a sweeper position as such. You're just given the role as a sweeper, which to me does make sense. I suppose it's not a a, a you know, change of where they actually stand on the pitch. They still are a defender. They're just more of a covering defender, if anything. Uh, defensive midfielder. Uh, no, it's all the same. I've liked. To see the addition of halfback because I do actually like the halfback role. I actually use it in quite a few of my tactics on Football Manager. Uh, that is the same as always. Winger wise is the same. Well, actually, no, we've not got defensive winger. Was defensive winger in last year? Maybe it's not. Let's uh, see, this is the issue when I play because I play all three versions of the game. I play touch, full fat, and this game. It's uh, yeah, I do get confused sometimes. That I believe is the same as well. So, from what I'm seeing. Uh, I believe it is just the addition of, yep, I think it is just the addition of the no nonsense centre back. I think that's the addition of uh, that wise. Uh, let's just move the formation back into a little bit more. Actually, let's go. Shall we, shall we go for the. No, no it's, too, it's too attacking, I think, in, in this one. We'll go, we'll go for that, to be fair. Uh, shape right, this is all the same stuff as we've seen last year. So, actually, let's just get my tactics. It doesn't take me long these days to get these tactics. So I kind of know what I want to to play. But there's no saying the match engine will react to the kind of way that I want us to to, to play this time around. So who knows? I kind of would. I kind of wanted to see. Yeah, I kind of wanted to see something worked. I hope this is again a step change for next year. Just something to to just even. I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but I want to kind of set up how my free kicks and set pieces are taken because at the moment. I can choose the taker, but I can't tell them what to do. I can't tell them to float the crosses. I can't tell them to, to drill it, to, to you know, to, to whip it in, to you know, hit the target man. I can't tell them anything at all to do, um, which is annoying. Uh, and I kind of wish that they would just add that little kind of feature in where I can just at least tell them what to, I want to do. You know, aim for the edge of the area, aim for the big man. You know, you know, play it short. I don't know something. Just I've got some kind of way of actually controlling what happens in the actual set piece itself uh, team report we've already looked into that tactics let's have a quick look okay this is all new so now it's not a simple case of just saying i want my defenders to be on the defensive course and then every single defender doing the same thing now you can actually train the the, the player so this robbie grotz here let's have a quick look so i can train him to be a defensive fullback if i want to which is good um i can change the intensity intensity 
this intensity can't say the word level as well so we can change it to light maybe i don't know what i've just pressed there what was that okay so we can actually this is how you retrain them now this is nice this is a nice as long as this works this is going to be really cool so i can actually tell him to i want you to be more of an attack minded player now so where has he gone there he is attacking with robbie grants i want you to be uh, an inside forward boom and i want you to close intensive there we go that is really cool i really really like that that is uh oh and actually we can tell them which area we want them to focus on so i want you to work on your pace this is really really good and it gives you a little bit more control now over the actual individual training of each player so you're not just giving them a big bulk training as such you can individually train each player um and hopefully as long as this works okay you've actually got kind of an overall kind of so this is actually on the player screen so if you go into the actual player you can go down to training as well and set it here so it's a little bit more uh, well there's basically two ways of going into it now yeah this is a really good addition i really like this this is really cool um as i said as long as this works and i'm presuming it's going to be linked into your coaches as long as this actually works and, and i'm not too sure this bar is here this is the manager indicates that oliver cassie uh, has been doing fairly well in training as we're going to for more playing time okay this is perfect this is like one-on-one -on -one feedback for, from each player so this is really really cool yeah, no, I do like this. Uh, keeper is unlikely to improve sniffing in the future. So I'm presuming this means that he's doing well in training, but he's, he's already kind of at his, um, uh, what's it called, potential ability. He's already kind of nearly there. So that's probably why he's unlikely to improve uh, in the future, but he is working on his aerial ability, although he's pretty strong at the moment, so I'll actually probably turn into a kind of tackling. But no, this is really good. As, I said, as long as this works, that's a really good addition. Uh, this I don't think is going to change. And why have I already played a friendly? why have i already played a friendly that's slightly weird um you've got in the carabao cup we've got blackpool in the carabao cup uh finances okay this screen looks different finances are okay at the moment it still doesn't really give me what i want at the moment it's not telling me how the club okay i can see that the club is doing okay but are we doing okay you know what are we gaining in merchandising gate receipts what's going out of the club at the moment all i can see is what my transfer budget is and wage budget which for the casual player is perfect that's all you want to know you want to know how much money you've got to spend you don't care you don't want to have financial control so maybe just maybe it is an option at the start of the game but i don't know because i don't know how many more people out there are actually interested in the financial side of the game it could just be me because it's the, the side of the game that i like in football manager as well so I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Are you interested? Would this be a feature you would like to see developed in the future? Uh, kind of what more things other than don't say 3D match engine because that's just miles off. It might not be even doable, but it's going to make the game file absolutely ridiculously huge if, if that is to happen. What feature would you like to see? Is it more financial? Is it tactic based? Kind of if they could pinch something from the full fat version, what would it be basically? As you can see, for me, I would love to see financials done worked on more um let's have a quick what else can we see here this i'm pretty i'm trying to quickly uh what, what's this let's see promotion signs complete opposition match report okay that's cool you can actually change who you want to do the match report now and kind of give a little bit more out to your kind of um uh back back room team there cop that looks the same that's the same that's yeah that's all there from la oops, all there from last year that's all there from last year Still can't do a season long holiday, which is annoying from experiments because you just have to do it month by month. Uh, board request. One thing I would have loved to have seen, and I just hope it, praise God, it comes in at some point, is the fact that you can actually add networking to this so you can actually get an affiliate club or a sub feeder club. So, think, so you can actually loan out players to a team or loan in players from a bigger team. I'd just love to see that kind of thing added to the um, 18 minutes already. It's a long video. I did say at the start of the game it's going to be a long video, but we are kind of getting in there. Just can have a quick look over at Germany now and have a look. Look at that. It looks nice, doesn't it? Let's have a quick look at Richard Dortmund's squad. Let's have a look at the man himself. Well, to he is the man himself. It wasn't always after that. I do like was Pulic, but I was actually looking for Jordan Sancho. There he is. Look at him. Look at him. 18 years of age. Look at the attributes already. That is insane. He's going to be a player and a half when he's. Yeah. Is there anything extra in here? We've got reserve team. Tactics, and uh, fixtures. That's weird. I can't see any fixtures. Oh, ah, why isn't the kit there? If you got, oh, oh, it's because I'm on the team too. Ah, oh, first thing. Hang on. Oh, I like that. I like that indeed. That is. Let's have a. Does that mean I've got my team's kit as well? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? General information. Oh, look at that away kit. 
Look at that tasty, I like it there. That's nice. Again, not gonna, it doesn't really add anything in terms of, you know, these are the little things that I like when I do this kind of thing, where they just add something that doesn't really kind of, you know, impact the game as such directly. It's not kind of adding any extra gameplay features, but it's just a nice subtle little touch and gives it that little bit more just class and, and just looks nice. So it's a nice finish that is. The additions of the kit will be really, really cool. Actually, does that mean, hang on a second, does that mean in Creator Club, this is gonna be another video, this is now, in Creator Club, can you create your own kit for your team? If you can, that's gonna be insane. That's gonna be so cool. Um, right, okay, let's get back on. Uh, what, what, what was we doing before we got sidetracked there? I'd actually just seen there that it says new, next match, what's going on here? Oh, okay, again, the rework's now in the match report. So it's got a little preview here. We were playing against, we were playing against Manchester United. Our first friendly, I didn't even notice that, is against, it was okay. So the game, <laughs> the game we're gonna be playing now is again, I've got Manchester United, Liverpool and West Brom as my friendlies. Nice, easy run up, I see the givers. Um, right, okay, <laughs> what? So, okay, so let's have a quick look at this. So it's actually, what it is saying is that Manchester United are favourites, they're tipped to win 2-1. Uh, there's no major concerns from injuries from either side, obviously there's no top goal score or average rating at the moment. We've drew a match randomly, not too sure where that came from. So it's now telling me what Manchester United's predicted 11 and formation they'll play. So they're pretty much going to be playing the same formation as, as me. Um, so obviously that would be good to see if, if this is true. You know, can I kind of work off that counterbalance with a different formation? The team report, oh, I like this indeed. This is uh, hard to tell me. So these are all negatives. I'm presuming the negatives uh, in terms of negatives towards me. The positives are that they're lacking leadership and their team appears to lack a bit of creativity. Everything else, though, is working against me. <coughs> and there is their club stats. Oh, yeah, we've got league run plays for Manchester United now, doesn't he? Uh, but that's nice. Again, another nice little feature uh, we've got from the game there. And overall, I think that's... Um, I'm not too sure what else I can, I can see here. So, scout for a, a play... Um, what's that? No, sorry. Oh, that's my scout results. Player search. Let's just have a quick delve in. Here, um, views are all the same. It's a, okay, oh, what's going on here? This is new. Oh, nice. Finally, again, listening to the community, this is what we asked for. I don't know, you, obviously, people who don't watch uh, my videos or, or play football manager, won't know this, but before you weren't able, you basically all you could do is choose goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, or um, a strike uh, attacker. So if you wanted an attacking left midfielder, you couldn't put you could put attacker left in, um, and it potentially you know bring up all the players who could play on the left, or you could potentially put midfielder left in, uh, but you didn't get the same. So sometimes you'd miss out on a player because you've not put because maybe predominantly their their overall position or starting position is a midfielder, so they'd be only under the midfielder thing. So it's like you know, so now the fact that I can say I want a left-footed, left-sided attacking player, and there it is. These are all the players. That can I'm going to scout into it. We can play in that position. Perfect. Well done, there. Sorry, tick in the box from me on that one. Injury included. That's nice. Um, the fact that you can actually see them players, or you can actually just completely remove them if you don't look at them. Uh, other than that, things I would like to see again going forward is the ability to just set your range yourself. Why can't I just have a box where I type in 15 to 20? You know, 15 to 17. Why if I don't want to look at zero to 21? Because that's annoying because then I can't filter. I can't filter to, you know, I don't want a player over 21 for whatever reason. I don't want a player over 19. But I can't. I can I can sort, but then that's just a pain in the arse. I then have to put in a, a value of, again, 0 to 2 million. Why can't I just put between 1 and 2 million? It's just uh, little things like that are, are, are the annoyance. Um, so while I'm happy with this, this still needs to change for me, so, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done. Oh, your boa, your boa, obviously, would love to bring your boa back to Leeds. And um, what else have we got? Uh, short list, oh, that doesn't really need to change at all, to be fair. Staff search, uh, interested employed, no, I think it's all the same stuff. Uh, jobs is the, will be the same anyway. Uh, find the club, yeah, that's gonna change. Scaring agency, that was introduced a few years ago. I don't really use that feature that much, to be fair. I have a look at it every now and again, but it's not really a massive feature. So I think that's it so far we've noticed. So we're gonna obviously delve forward now 
and get to the match against Manchester United and have a quick look if any news comes up there. Obviously, that's just telling me that obviously Gotts has obviously started his, his training. But yeah, I'm going to delve into the... Um, yeah, you can actually, you know, whatever, I'm not, I'm not going to be playing this say I will be starting any one over and over again. Actually, just saying that before we're going to get into the game, which obviously we're going to now, this this scouting thing here, I like it. I really liked it when it was introduced. I just think that, again, they need to start building this now. So, like in the full fat game, and I hate referring to this a lot in this video, but why can't you have it so it tells you, you know, that if you were to sign Alfonso Davis, where would he fit in your current, um, you know, squad? Where, where would he sit in that team? Is he your third best choice attacking the field left? Is he, you know, just where does he sit in the squad? That would just be a nice indication. A lot of it says your scout thinks that Davis will need... Um, and enticing off to consider a move, but it doesn't tell me if he'd fit into my team, is he worth technically buying? That's why I need to see it, or you know, it's just, it, I just think it needs a little bit more work. If I like it again, liked it, but it does still need to be more. So let's have a quick look now. That's obviously what I've seen before, isn't it? Nothing has changed on that. That is just reminding me that's coming to. So we're going to be playing against Manchester United of all people. What a game for the game to choose for me to play against. Um, yeah, you can just have them, that's fine. Any game time for these youngsters is key. Yeah, you can have Theo as well. I don't, too bad, I'm not even massively, uh, I don't know some of these players, uh, which is really weird. Are they in my reserve Oh, they are. oh God, we've got, a, we've got them all here. We've got, oh, we've got Sam as well. Uh, no, that's really, really cool. We have got a lot of the players. We've got Clarky. Uh, I've player. We've got Jack Clark as well. He's definitely a player I'm looking to develop. This is great. How much more depth I've got in the squads now. That's really cool. I'm presuming obviously that's only based on when you load up the leagues, but the amount of players I've actually got in the team now. Let's actually just uh, rev let's just take all the players that I can't play because there's no need to have that many players in there. But this is really really cool. I like that a lot. Let's have a look if I say I don't know if your bow is worth it to be fair. But um, yes, it's going to be Leeds United versus Manchester United now. Uh, let's just unpick. The, I'm just going to quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. To be fair, guys. Just gonna quickly slot in the uh, where's Big Buzzer, Big Buzzer Douglas. Um, where is Aileen as well? We're gonna start with uh, where is Janssen. We're then gonna have Phillips. Uh, we're gonna have Click. Where is he? There he is. And then we're gonna have on the right Hernandez. On the centre Samu. On the left we're gonna start Roberts maybe. Now we'll start with Jackie Boy Harrison. And then we'll go roof up top. We'll have Bamford on the bench, obviously. We'll stick uh, Jamal Blackman on the bench. Berardi, Mr. Versatility. Um, we'll have Forshaw as well. Skelton. Um, who else we have? Sacco's not a Leeds anymore, is he? I swear Sacco. I swear Sacco's gone. Um, we'll have Elioski as well. We'll have Tyler Roberts. We'll have the boy Dallas, Pierce maybe. Uh, well, we'll, we'll start one of the youngsters as well. There we go. That'll do it. That's the lineup. Leeds United versus Manchester. Okay, the Cun's not got a shirt. We're just gonna quickly just pick him one. There we go. Oh God. Here we go. I forgot that I gave uh, Bradley Kick Peacock Fowl the number uh, number nine shirt. So Manchester United have gone with a pretty strong starting eleven. Uh, they have gone. Uh, they've gone De Gea, Shaw, Smalling, Jones, Valencia as their back five. Pogba, Pog, what the name is that? Pogba and Matic as their kind of holding midfielders. They've got Sanchez, Fellaini a surprise start there, and Rashford as their attacking three off the back of Lukaku. We've gone for Peacock, Farrell and goal. Big Bazza, Douglas at left back, Aiden at right back. We've gone and got Cooper and Janssen as a defensive partnership. We've gone. Phillips in just in front of them, then Klitsch as a lone central midfielder. Then got Hernandez on the right, Harrison on the left. Size just in behind Karen Roof. I haven't set my players' roles. This could not go to. Let's have a quick. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. This is cool. So now I can actually have my. Uh, okay, they've kind of preset it to probably what I'd have it anyway. So I can actually have the speed during the highlights, the speed between the highlights, to make that all annoying bit faster, which is perfect. Goal replays as well. This is cool. I've got goal replays on as well now. And I can have them slower, faster. This is cool. This is good. Nice more, nice addition there. What's this here? I don't know what that is though. 
who else is doing it there? Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe we'll we'll find out what it is. His aliens got the ball now. Uh, well, as you know, we haven't we got a uh, corner. Sanchez whips it in. Pogba and Manchester United have scored six minutes in, and it's that man, Paul Pogba. It's because it's because we've got number nine in goal, isn't it? That's what it is. Here's a replay of the goal. So Sanchez with the corner. We deal with the defense. Well, we deal with it first of all, but we just left Pogba there. Again, I had nothing to do. I couldn't. Why can't I choose that every man is man marked? Uh, that is really annoying. Um, but obviously we have conceded. Oh my God, this is a shit show. This is a shower of the cakes offside. It's fractionally offside. Um, that is really annoying. Oh, okay, they're going to, they're going to show. A, 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 what's, it's not a VIR, it can't be. But they are showing a uh, a replay of the offside. I like that. That is really cool as well. Um, I wonder if VAR is in this game. Obviously, we haven't got VAR in this, but I wonder if we load up a league that has got VAR in it, if if it's actually doable. Uh, not doable, if it's if it's there, if that can overturn a uh, thing or not. What is this? Ah, ah, that is cool. That is a nice feature. So I can now go back at any point during the game and show you that uh, Manchester United goal chalked off. And as I said that, they've just actually scored again now. This is starting... Because I've got attacking, isn't it? This is starting to become a little bit concerning. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the counter now, and we're actually going to play. We're actually going to drop Klitsch back as well, and we're actually going to we'll start looking at um, looking at some of these roles. So we don't we don't want two defensive midfielders, a ball player, and you know that's actually what we want. That's what worked out perfect. Um, and I actually want Hernandez and uh, Harrison to actually be inside forwards now. I wanted to push right in alongside that, and. Can be a shadow shock as well. Basically, just want them to put. To be fair, it's going to, no, no, it's going to leave a massive gap. That is going to leave a huge, huge, huge gap. Okay, well, no, we need to we need to do something though. I do want them to push up. Um, short now. We need to get a bit more direct or passing in this. Do I need to work to the? No, we want to central actually. Let's go really narrow. Let's push them right in actually. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can at least... Okay, it's going to be hard to obviously come back from. We're against a, a very strong Manchester United team. Um, but I just don't want to get dicked all over here, to be fair, to be honest. I just want to put in at least a decent performance. Uh, if we can get a goal back, that would be ideal. Uh, but if, if we can keep it at 2-0 now and just make it hard for them to break us down, this is good. This is nice. Nice, patient build-up play. But just not that end product there from Leeds United, which actually has been a little bit of our downfall in real life sometimes this season. Although we are doing okay this season, you know, again, we always do okay. Good save there from Peacock Farrell. He was off so, but Farrell wasn't to know there. But, you know, Leeds United, they, we do this quite a bit, to be fair. We, you know, start well, then comes Christmas time and January, we just seem to forget how to play football. This season so far, oh, Karim Roof there with an opportunity, but De Gea saves it. Um... Yeah, so it could be our undoing sometimes when we've just not taken our chances when they've made themselves available. This is definitely a better performance from Leeds since I've just reverted back to a kind of more defensive friendly tactic. We are looking now to hit them on the break, but the patient builder, as you see there, the, the actual down, the, if you look down below there, the possession, the shot, the shots on target, so forth, it's quite an even game. If I hadn't kind of gone so gunko right at the start of the game, you know, maybe we could be in a slightly different position here. The fact that nothing comes up at half time. You know, maybe just a team talk, just to kind of get the morale back into the team. Would have been nice, even if you only got a few options. Could have been something that could have been added. But the fact that they've not added anything, again, for me, it's slightly really disappointing this year. Um, as I know, quite a few people probably did mention it last season. Um, but obviously, you know, they can't cater to every single person's, you know, needs and wants out of the game, which has been an absolute shambles, because it just wouldn't work with it. Okay, I was slightly concerned there. We just gave lost position and Lukaku had an opportunity to just bang one. Uh, come on, Phillips now, Hernandez, it's Cooper, Aileen now, Hernandez, he's through, oh my word, I think, I'm not too sure, I thought he hit the post there, he, oh, he took the throw in too early there, no one was set, it's nice. this is actually some nice football from Leeds United here, just again, the end point of Karim Roof, oh, come on, this is getting so close now, we've got to take one of these opportunities, if we are in any way, shape or form looking to get back into this game. But, you know, as I said, this is a very strong Manchester United team and we are keeping them at bay. If I've just not been a complete douche the manager right at the start of the game, this could have been a completely different story. Uh, you know, they've got a lot of very talented players, which we have as well for the level we're at at the moment. You know, I think we've got a lot of premiership talent uh, kind of class players. But we are keeping Manchester United at bay now. And to be fair, I'd probably say we're looking the better of the two teams. As we do look to be... Karen Roof now, he's gone past. Go oh my word, De Gea makes himself huge. And Paul's off the same. Karen Roof just needs to keep his composure a little bit longer. 
Uh, there were options arriving, but saying that now, Karen Roof has scored. It's Manchester United 1, Leeds United. That's wrong. It's Manchester United 2, Leeds United 1. As they do make a substitution, as I will be looking to make a substitution soon. But this is where we need to be now. Can we salvage it? It's not a point, but can we get a draw from this game now? It's Manchester United come awfully close there. And we've actually now got a free kick. This is getting pretty intense now. What a game this has been for us. As I said, if I'd just not been a complete idiot, Karen, oh, it's the replay, isn't it? It's the replay, it just got me. The replay, why was that so far after the actual, why was that so far after the actual kind of goal that had me there? I was gonna say, that was almost a recreation of that first goal, um, which it, it, it was, because it's just, it's just a replay. Oh my God, that had me. I think it's because that was the only break in play, but the kickoff should have been then, the time where it did the replay, not, start playing and then have me absolutely go crazy because I thought we'd gone, we pulled it back to 2-2. Two, two. We have got corner, Sammy says now to the corner. Roof goes uh, front post, but it is actually dealt with Ailey now. Till it says, Roof has a shot. We've now got another, another corner kick now. This is really intense, this game, guys. Roof now took this one in, plays it into the box. It's dealt with Pogba now. Hopefully, we won't get caught on the count here as Sanchez uh, does pretty much what Sanchez has been doing all season for Manchester United. Otherwise, actually does actually do something pretty decent there, actually puts a ball to the box and gets a corner. But Sanchez has been very disappointing in real life. They've done that a few times now. Harrison's done really well there. He's, he's gone near and he's actually blocked it twice as they do put it in and Matic has fouled Klitsch. Uh, we are actually going to look to bring on a substitution just after the, hopefully this breaks down. Hopefully it won't come into goal. It doesn't. It's goal kick to Leeds United and we do have a break in play. So let's have a quick look. I do think maybe now is not the time to bring on young Jamie Shackleton. We do need a little bit more experience. I'm looking at you, Dallas, to be fair, to be honest. No one's playing bad. No one is playing bad. Everyone's actually not too bad in the health. I don't know, actually. Do I just bring on Tyler Roberts to just on for maybe Jackie Harrison on that left-hand side? Let's just bring on uh, Tyler. No, what have I done there? I said Tyler Roberts on for, there we go, Harrison. There we go. That, that, I think that's it. To be fair, I don't really think anything needed to change, but we're just for a little bit more of ejection of pace now from Robert. That's what he adds to is a little bit more of injection of pace down that left-hand side now. And let's see if he's if he is going to be the key that unlocks that Manchester United defence as they do play. Another really poor ball now. Uh, Matic just coming off for Manchester United. I think it's actually a double substitution, is it? It is a double substitution. Um, well, to be fair, it is only a friendly, so maybe let's bring on a few more players now as it does look like it's going to be a 2-1 one, one, uh, loss for Leeds. And let's, like, maybe let's bring on a, a few of the other boys Come on, let me get on the screen. Let's bring on. I mean, Roof's had a really good game, but let's bring on. Uh, actually, no, let's bring on Kun. We will actually put Bamford on the right hand side for Hernandez. We're going to bring on Shackleton for Click. Uh, actually, I'm just going to pop him a bit forward now. I'm into that more. Um, who else should we bring on as well? I think that'll do. Actually, no, it's brought on for sure as well. For There we go. Imagine if Kun gets the winner now. Oh, number one's on the pitch. Number one is outfield. We've got number nine in goal and number one playing right midfield. Some people are going to be absolutely screaming at the screen right now. See, I could change it to, to um, all out attack kind of thing and, and go for it, but I don't really want to concede again. And I think we've I think we've actually been playing really well to be perfectly honest. I think this is the second half performance in in particular. I think we've actually been the better of the two teams. And to be fair, we probably could have come away with something. Oh, for fuck's sake! As I say, we could have come away with something. The cut, let's just, I, I, I don't think we've got anything. Oh my God, look at that. Wholesale changes now. A replay of the goal as well. Douglas loses the ball out of the who just, is that um, number 18? Who's number 18 there? I wonder who number 18 is. Is it Cooper? Is it Janssen? Is Janssen number 18? It is, it's Janssen, isn't it? Why was he, why was he so slow there? Uh, I mean, to be fair, we might just uh, shoot on time, sorry, and three balls. We might as well just go for it now. Overload. Oh, I was still on attacking. Why was I on attacking for? I thought I put it on counter. I don't really know, to be fair. Don't know what happened there. Uh, but nonetheless, I think we've had a decent performance anyway. Uh, it's all over. Manchester United 3, oh, Leeds United 1. That's definitely never a scoreline I ever want to say again. Uh, but, you know, I think we give it a decent account of ourselves. And, uh, yeah. Oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, okay, a progression review. Let's have what's going on here. Learned a little from being involved in this friendly. Why did you learn a little? You should have learned quite a bit. You played really well considering we are against a very strong Manchester United team. Okay, I'm not too sure. Let's have a quick look. 
This page displays a summary of what your players learned during the match. You click on the person well. Okay, so I'm presuming obviously different matches give you different progression. And does this work towards your player's potential ability? I'm not really too sure what this works towards, to be fair. Uh, so I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I kind of like the fact they give you this at the end of the game, but what uh, what is it working towards? I think a little bit more explanation needs on that one. And then we've got the review as well there as well. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the review because I know this has gone on for pretty absolutely forever. Um, so yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts down below of the game. Are you going to be buying it yourself? Have you already bought it yourself? And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not disappointed in it. I'm, I'm happy with quite a few of the changes. I, I knew this wasn't going to be a massive overhaul. Um, but yeah, some of the things I've added are really, really nice. Obviously, I probably will find a few more things as I'm going through my save. But overall, my first impression of the game are it's it's a kind of nice upgrade. It's not a reskin as such. They have done some work behind it. Even the match engine felt slightly different. The fact you can change the speeds and everything is really cool. Uh, look at review, you know, review things. I'm assuming the VARs may be added in the, in the leagues that have got VR added. But we'll have to look into that uh, a little bit more. But yeah, it's 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 a decent uh, upgrade on the game. I very much think that Football Manager does these in cycles. So even with the full fat game, you you always get a 0.5 upgrade every now and again, just because you know there's maybe things that weren't quite ready for the release of the game, so they have to move them forward to the next one. Uh, but yeah, overall, it looks okay. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know what team you're going to be matching in the first one. If you have survived right up to this point in the video, make sure you comment down below the word pizza. I have been Just Mike Plays, and I'll speak to you later soon.